Yo, Rob Harvilla from 60 Songs That Explain the 90s here to inform you that we are back with 30 more songs because the 90s were super long and had a ton of rad music. Please join us every Wednesday for more 60 Songs That Explain the 90s only on Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet and the other... Well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. Today, I am joined by the one and the only Matt James 919. That's how you're known on this podcast, Matt James 919, because of your your uh, handle on Instagram. Before before you even spoke a word, Matt, how are you? I'm doing well. That's a coveted area code. Shout out to Raleigh. <laughs> Shout out to North Carolina. Is that still your like username for everything, or is it just Matt James? <sighs> Full disclosure. I love Raleigh. I did look into changing my uh, my username, and um, apparently, there's a bunch of Matt Jameses out there. So, oh, so you gotta um, stick with that. I gotta stick with it. I'm not. I'm not upset though. I like it. I, I, it's my uh, it's my brand now. I guess your other options could have been like Matt James Bachelor, Matt James ABC. Ooh, ooh. ABC could have had a double meaning for food tours and the channel. ABC could have worked. This is, this is a little mouthful though. Matt James <laughs> ABC. Well, that seems a, like a lot. Yeah, seriously. That's what a lot of uh, MTV people do. Like after they go on the challenge, it's like Nani MTV or like bananas MTV. <sighs> See, I, I, that's where I got to disagree. You got to be able to, to maneuver outside of, you know, that space. And hopefully uh, you're not wanting to be associated with something like that for the rest of your life because there's a bunch of life to live. I get it making it easier and stuff, but like, I think a lot of people get pulled into that, especially with with bachelor stuff, you know, they end up selling their soul to, to hang around the franchise a little, a little bit longer than they should. And a lot of people end up leaving with a sour taste in their mouth because of it. Well, that's a perfect transition because you're here today because you are not doing that. <laughs> and because your book is out this week, which is called first impressions and it's a memoir. Um, and it is the subtitles off screen conversations with a bachelor on race, family and forgiveness. And I was really excited to have you on the show because I I really felt when you were The Bachelor, we really didn't get to know you at all. Like, I just felt like it was, as you allude to in your book, the moment the show came out was a pretty wild moment in America. And then the show was engulfed by controversy. And then just putting all that aside, you were like almost not the star of your own season. It was pretty weird. Like, I just feel like I, I can't even tell you what was, but it wasn't you. Um, and... I was just really glad that now we have the opportunity to like really, you know, find out who Matt James 919 actually is. And so I'm curious, like when you decided to write the book, like what was the main thing you wanted to uh, convey to people? So that's forever going to be my name for you, Matt James 919. It is. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mad at that. Um, I think that, you know, it started out of frustration, to be honest with you. Like I'm just sitting there watching everything back. And, you know, the goal for me wasn't to be like, the star of the show because I knew that it wasn't always about me. You know, there's all these women that came here who put all their, uh, their life, their dreams, their goals aside to come meet me and see if I was potentially their match. But throughout that process, you know, the, the genuineness and the relationship and the love story got lost and things that are going to be forgettable, you know, like petty drama, just tacky stuff that 
you know, I, I think that the franchise is better than, um, I feel like a lot of the stuff that was brewing up, you can go to, you know, VH1 or, you know, Netflix to find that type of drama. Like that's not what I thought the bachelor was about, but, um, it, it, it ended up working out for me. But, um, to answer your question, I just didn't feel like I was represented the way I would have liked to. Mm -hmm. And I talked about so much on my group dates, on my one-on-ones. I'm talking about like intimate, deep stuff about my family and myself that, you know, just didn't make the final cut. And that context, I wasn't just speaking for my health. Like I was trying to provide, you know, reasoning as to why I am the way I am and why I went about things the way that I did. And without that context, you know, the, the story doesn't come together well. There's just yeah. like mismatch of like, oh, that was like a deep moment with his dad. And it's like, but you know, aside from that, there's not a lot of, there was a lot there. So I started out, there was people reaching out as the show was airing, like, Matt, this story really resonated with me. Like, I really appreciate you doing that, uh, being vulnerable, sharing that with me. And there was different antidotes all throughout the season where people were reaching out. And I'm like, you know what? maybe this isn't about me. Like maybe mm -hmm. this is about empowering everybody else who's getting strength through hearing me share the things that I'm most vulnerable about, you know, vulnerable about the things that I've gone through with my dad, my brother, um, growing up multiracial. Uh, there's a million different antidotes that I think people will be able to pick from the book that resonates with their life. You know, you mentioned, um, how your dad was depicted on the show. Rachel, Lindsay, and I did a pod like right after that episode, which I think was like the third to last or second to last of your season. We both were pretty appalled at how your dad was represented. Um, what was it like for you to watch that specific episode? And in general, what was it like to see like a version of your life refracted on television that you knew was not actually true? <sighs> Oh uh, man, it was, it was, it was just disappointing because mm -hmm. I saw there was such an opportunity for, uh, this season to be special in a, in a multitude of different ways, uh, which ultimately I didn't even realize at the time, you know, I, when I signed up to be the bachelor, I was, I was hoping to find a wife, someone that, you know, I could spend the rest of my life with. And then after that announcement was made and the onslaught of like, Hey Matt, you know what you have to do. This is your responsibility from like white people, black people all over the place. I'm like, Oh snap. Like this isn't just a bachelor anymore. Like this is like, like a social, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? It's a social reckoning, like show them. So, uh, taking that into account on top of the way that, you know, my dad, the conversation with my dad went and our relationship was, was portrayed again, was just extremely frustrating because they, 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 the, the ball was dropped. Yeah. And, um, I actually had conversations with Rachel. I called Rachel right after I watched the episode and I was like, I don't feel comfortable with how everything's going. Like, yeah. cause by this time, you know, there's just this snowball effect of just drama, drama, drama. And then the personal drama with me and Rachel's relationship. And then everyone's weighing in on it. It was so I, the only person I could really go to that I felt like could empathize with me and give me sound advice was Rachel. Lindsay, Rachel Lindsay. She did. So I was, yeah, Rachel Lindsay. It's confusing with all these Rachels. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, that was really tough to watch and, and really, really frustrating. I, I think the show has learned a little bit, but I, I think it's, I wanted to ask you, usually I know from doing this podcast for a long time, for the year after your show airs, you can't do anything outside of like ABC press. Are you outside of, or at least with their kind of signing off, are you outside of your one year with ABC? I am. And like, I, I haven't been like watching the clock waiting to like, you know, like bash the franchise because it worked for me. You know, I went on there to find someone that I was compatible with and I did. And, you know, there's, there's enough people that have, you know, up and down experiences that can go into the specifics. You know, that's not, that wasn't the goal of the book and that's not, you know, my mo ever because i have so much respect for the people who you know bring that show to life the yeah. camera operators the sound people the, the grips like I, I i get everyone has a job to do um but you know sometimes it's just frustrating so sure 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 um you said you went on the show to find love and you are still dating rachel kirk Connell. did i say her last name right kirk connell kirk connell 
I think Kirkana. someone someone started saying Kirkconnell at some point, so I started saying it. But okay, phonetic Kirkconnell. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are still together. I know that Peter asked about your relationship all the time, and I'm going to be honest. I don't care that much. I wish you guys the best, but I mean, I'm just like, do do you? That's great. If you guys yeah. are happy, um, I am a little curious about how you worked through some of the really tough moments from the um, Emmanuel Acho sit down. We can come back to that. But my real question is. Did you really think you would find love on the show? Like, why did you go on? So that's a great question. I was very optimistic because of Tyler's experience. So, you know, my roommate, for those who don't know, is Tyler Cameron at the time. And he had gone on the show uh, during Hannah Brown's season. And uh, if anyone's Tyler had listened, only had listened to Bachelor Party before, they are definitely aware. So just, just to be clear. <laughs> but sorry, I interrupted you. Keep going. <laughs> No, you're good. Just to provide some more context. Um, <laughs> I I was not, I didn't know what to expect from Tyler's experience. I'm like, man, best of luck. Like, hopefully um, <clears throat> you're compatible with this person. And when he came back, you know, I come to find out that he almost proposed. So I'm like, what the <laughs> heck happened to this man within like six to eight weeks while he was gone, that his life has changed to the point where he's done. He's ready to settle down. And this is his woman. And, um, as someone who hadn't been in a, in a serious relationship since, you know, college, I, I was ready for that. And so to answer your question, I was optimistic because of the fact that I had seen how it worked for Tyler, but I was still skeptical because, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's like, you, you're going on a TV show to, to find a genuine connection, which doesn't seem to go hand in hand, but I was so forthcoming with, you know, my life and my information that, you know, a week or two in, it didn't really feel like a show because it's like, they don't, I, I wanted them to not see me as like the bachelor. It's just like, Oh, that's Matt. Like, like I, I didn't want them to be like on pins and needles when they're around me. I want them to feel like we're connecting at a tailgate, a bar, mm. you know, whatever, like in, in the, in the common area of a, of a lobby. Like I didn't want it to feel like there's this like hierarchy. And so, you know, our conversations and our interactions, I try to make as genuine as possible. So it wasn't like, you know, like, what do I, I don't think there was a lot of that. So you try to find ways to work around it being like inauthentic, but at the same time, it's like, what's the right way to meet somebody? Like people meet people on Tinder, people meet people at the airport. Like there's not like a, a traditional way of like meeting somebody anymore with the ways that, you know, the internet's been able to connect us. No one can see, but you're wearing a sweatshirt that says meeting you is a nice accident. And that's a great, that's a great, that's a great slogan. <laughs> what brand is that? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure this is Lonely Ghost. Don't, oh. don't sue me if it's not, but I, I love Lonely Ghost. They have, they have pretty fire messaging. So I think this is Lonely Ghost. But... It's like, that's a really good way of summing up what you just said. Like, it is true. You never, you never know how you're really going to meet someone anymore. It could, it could happen anywhere. I, which I think I like love romantic comedy. So I feel like that's, I love a great meet cute as they say. Right. Yeah. It's like, I, like I, that has been debunked for me, like over the past few years. Cause it's like, how do you meet somebody? Like, yeah. like, Oh, you need to go here to meet like, like, there's not really everyone like you ask people how they got married in the, in the last three, four years, especially with COVID, they're going to say a lot of online relationships. And I think that's more weird meeting somebody online than it is meeting somebody in person because the catfishing aspect of it. I don't know. To each his own though. I think texting is a weird way to start. Um, if you have, right. no con- if you have no context for each other, it's just like, then I think that's, I agree. But I think what works about it similar to the bachelor. And I've said this before is like, you come to it, with very clear expectations and there's no like there's no games because you're like we're both on this app because we want to meet someone or we're both on this tv show because we want to meet someone so it's not like oh like what are they interested in like it's just like really direct which is also i find kind of weird but you know uh so is that your approach you're just super direct on the apps uh, I was in super direction real life i as i said i would i wouldn't really i'm not really crazy about um uh texting to like get to know people but um you know, I don't know. Ask Tyler. I would say I'm super direct. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, whatever. But, um, and you guys are still together, which is pretty amazing. I, how did you like move on from the show? Like, well, first of all, very micro question. What was the first thing you did when you got your phone back? And then second of all, like, how did you decompress and like find normalcy? The first thing I did when I got my phone back, ah. Uh... 
you know what? I think I was like, I think I went and watched sports highlights because I missed like the NBA finals and like some other stuff. And then I went to Twitter and I was reading about yeah, the election you did. because yeah, the finals were in uh, October that year. So you did. That's yeah. Correct. I missed the finals. There was the election. So I was oh, like yeah. catching up on all this craziness. Like you were like Biden. Was, what? Kamala Harris. First black I woman was, vice president. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Cause I didn't, we didn't, I couldn't watch TV. Like we didn't have any context to what's, I mean, they're not holding information from us, but like, they're, like the, I, I specifically remember they're like, like a few days after the election, they're like, we don't know who won. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like what's, what's going on? So that was the first thing I did. And then I just started reaching out to family and stuff. Uh, but I think how me and Rachel moved past everything that took place was like, we removed ourselves from that bubble. Cause like when you're, when you encompass yourself and like all these other like bachelor bachelorette relationships and like your expectations and like, like what they, uh, like the gossip and just like the bullshit that goes on. Like, like we just separate, we just sidestepped it and we just did stuff that was unconventional. You know, uh, we spent a lot of time together. We didn't do, you know, the, the, we didn't do the press tour. Um, yeah, we didn't do the press tour. We didn't do like, you know, hey, we're here on Paradise. Like, this is how we have a healthy relationship. It's like, no, we spent time together, uh, spent time with each other's family and just invalidated that my feelings were the way they were. Because I had to take a step back initially. I'm like, wait, do I really love this woman or is it because I'm in this like crazy yeah. social experiment where people were telling me to do this and do that? And so when I took a step back, I'm like, damn, no, I, I really do miss I do. I, I miss her. And we started talking again and, and here we are. That's great. So Matt, where do you live now? That's a good question. So currently I am in my old building in, in New York. Cause I'm in New York for the press tour, mm-hmm. but for I live book. in Miami now, which for the book, yeah, the book that's dropping tomorrow. Uh, I'm in Miami now though. I, uh, I, I love it down there. I highly recommend anybody who's spent a significant amount of time in the Northeast or Chicago, anywhere cold, move to Florida because <laughs> I did it and the, your life, you will be a happier person. Just going outside and it being warm and it's sunny like that enough is just going to be like a game changer. So yeah, it's been great. Um, I am a native New Yorker and I went to college in Chicago. So I've experienced a lot oh, of wow. cold weather, but I would never move to Florida. So, but I'm happy for you. That's you great. You don't mean that. No, I, I really do. Um, are you going to go to the Miami Grand Prix? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm, I'm a beeline from Minneapolis. I'm going out to Minneapolis, the Mall of America uh, on Saturday. And then Saturday night, I'm flying right back down to Miami. Uh, and I'm going to be there Sunday for the, for the final race. So. Do you follow Formula One? Absolutely not. Okay, but well, just, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah, go ahead. Go. I'll just tell you, Ferrari is in the, in the lead. They're being challenged by okay. Red Bull. And Lewis Hamilton's having an epically bad year after he got screwed out of the championship last year. I love Lewis. He's a great celebrity. I don't follow, but I knew that much. I knew that he wasn't doing great. I knew Ferrari is a front runner because one of my really good friends is obsessed with F1. And um, I just feel like as, some, as a fan of sports, like I need to, I need to be there because it's like Absolutely. we have a... You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you, you should watch the show on Netflix, Drive to Survive. You'll get into it. See? Yeah, you, you're probably the hundredth part. I, I don't know why I haven't I haven't <laughs> it's watched really it. It's really fucking good. It's like the best sports documentary of all time. And um I I like it's really awesome. I can't I can't recommend it enough. Everyone's alluding to this like young gunner who's like supposedly dethroned Hamilton now. Uh, or I could be really late. Charles um, Leclerc? Yeah. He's the leader. And then George Russell's on Lewis's team and he's pretty good too. But he's, I think, pretty lame. But that's just my own opinion. It's no big deal. Wait, are you going to be down there? No, I really wish. But maybe next year. Yeah, you, really, you really do hate Florida, huh? No. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. I can't abandon my mom. Um, but <laughs> anyway. That's fair. <laughs> um, and so since you have been on the show, I follow you on social media. That's why I call you Matt James 919. You're really big into crypto. How did you choose like what you were going to do? And like, who do you trust? Like after you get super famous, you got to make your circle even smaller, I would guess. So like, who do you trust? And like, how do you know when you're getting good investment advice? Uh, I also can tell I I'm asking you questions you never want, never expected because you're just laughing at me. No, it's great. <laughs> I'm dying. Cause these are the things that I want to talk about with my girlfriend. And she's like, ready to like choke me whenever I start talking about them. 
Um, in terms of crypto, uh, well, we'll backtrack. So in terms of doing things that I want to do, you know, I was working in commercial real estate and I just, you know, it was a, a means to an end. I, I did it because, you know, uh, the prospect of making a lot of money was there, but you know, my heart wasn't in it. And now that, um, I have a little bit more flexibility with what I can do. I'm diving back into the things that I'm interested in, which is crypto, NFTs, hydroponic farming, like things that, you know, there aren't linear verticals for because there aren't the, the, the industries aren't mature enough. Uh, and you can't really go somewhere for a formative, uh, education on those things. So like, so how do you know you're people, not getting screwed? Like when they're like, buy this, how do you know you're not getting screwed? You got to do your own research, just like anything else. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. And uh, I, again, a lot of it's doing your own research and talking to people who are smarter than you. And a lot of them tell you that you're dumb because, you know, <laughs> these are institutional, <laughs> older investors who would never, you know, gamble with internet money. But you've seen, you know, people my age, younger, who have like, had this rise to prominence in trading these speculative digital assets because, you know, we're becoming digitally native people. And, uh, you know, it's just about being risk averse, not biting off too much that you can't handle. So that's what I do in regards to crypto. And then in regards to NFTs, like it's just a fun place to be involved with. Like what other asset can you see go from, uh, a thousand times X overnight and or in the span of a week, like stock market's not doing that. Real estate's not doing that. Like NFTs, you can invest a little, uh, you can, you can, you can find an entry point that's suitable for anybody. And then that entry point, you know, if you bought a board ape, I hate the, the, the last I'll talk about it. You buy no. a board ape. Did you buy one? For, I didn't. Mm. But if you did, you spent <laughs> maybe a couple hundred bucks on a thousand dollars. And today that, thousand dollars literally a year later would have returned you over a million dollars in you know digital assets that you could ex- exchange at any time for usd so you could have bought a house you could have paid off your college you could whatever you want to do with a million dollars so you could mint multiple so you could be a multimillionaire off of buying pictures of an ape uh, it's a fun it's a fun <laughs> uh field and area to be involved in if you can you know create generational wealth uh investing in pictures did you move to florida for the tax benefits given your interest in this stuff I think that that's an added benefit of living in Florida. <laughs> but the reason I moved down there was because during COVID, I was living in the quarantine house with sure. you know Tyler and 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 I just loved it down there. It was a reverse retiring. I'm like, why would I go back to New York if I could do everything I want to do in South Florida? Just like you, like I know you want to get down to Florida at some point. Like I just did it sooner <laughs> than you know the average person. So uh, there was no going back. Sure. Although I just wanted to let you know, I moved to New York during the pandemic. I was in LA and then I, I came home. I was like, okay. And I, I like, what? I literally moved to New York on March 12th, 2020. I know. Yeah. You're lying. I swear. What part of the city? Uh, I'm from New York city. I'm from the upper West side and I moved to, to Brooklyn. I was in downtown Brooklyn and then I was in Cobble Hill and now I'm in Park Slope. I mean, I, I as much as I want to rag on you for that, I love Brooklyn, especially yeah, Park awesome. Slope. So that was probably a great place to be. It is great. Yeah, I live one block from Prospect Park. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, um, I know, man. It's, you're, you're missing out. New York's great. Also, like right now, you're there right now, right? It's like Met Gala week and just like spring. And people like in during COVID love spring and summer so hard in New York. It is like joyous and like jubilant. And so it's great. I don't know. I I think it's a wonderful you know place. You why? Because you all chase the, the <laughs> you chase the days that we get every year in Florida, so every day in Florida is like that one Friday, that one Thursday where you're like, it's 71 degrees. I'm gonna leave work 30 minutes early so I can go get hammered on a rooftop. And I'm like, hey, listen, when I was here, I'm about it. But guess what? If you move to Florida, you can get hammered every day. You don't have to leave to work early. <laughs> I lived in LA for eight years. I know that warm weather life. It's not for me. You're not gonna convince me, but. How do you feel about being a part of this like crypto movement in Miami? Like, do you feel like, do you feel like it undercut some of your interests or does it add to it? Because you're like, I'm happy to be a part of this new scene. It's like, cause like influencers and, and crypto bros for lack of a better term, I'll move there. Well, for, all right. First of all, I'm going to, I'm going to defend my move to Miami because okay. I feel like influencers have made, uh, 
a, a, a mass exodus from like middle America, West coast, all to New York. Like, I feel like there was a run on New York from like a bunch of people who were specifically bachelor nation. Um, and I felt like, you know, when people zig, you got to zag. So you know, I, I think, had to move down to Miami. I think Tyler kind of started that just for what's worth. It was LA for a really long time. And then it became New York. And I, I want to give Tyler Cameron credit. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What's the, what's the hype on LA? Like, if I, I was out there for almost a year last year and stinks. It's flat. I, I, Dead. I'd rather, yeah, like I'd rather be in in Costa Mesa or San Clemente, like near the beach. Sure. Personally, yes, that, that's that's good. Yes, I agree. But I don't. I'm just not like a. I don't like all the driving. That's my problem. Um, yeah, but, the driving's terrible. Yeah. You don't, don't have know. to drive in Miami. You just get your little scooter. I got a Super 73. We'll get you a, we'll get you an e-bike. You don't even <laughs> spend any time down there. You got to take a trip down there before you start killing my city. It's crazy, man. Do you feel like you listen to Pitbull a lot? Like, are you down with Mr. 305? <laughs> I am not a, I'm not crazy about Pitbull, but I will tell you, uh, and it's been reflected on my Spotify playlist. Uh, I am like, like I've always been like hardcore R&B and hip hop, but like, over the past few months, like you'll see some like, like let's get down, let's get down to business. Like these, <laughs> like you know, these like these like like trance, like not EDM, but like they kind of grow on you just because kinda you like see everybody music. vibing. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You can't be afraid to have a good time when you hear good music. You just gotta vibe with stuff. It's a lot of really good Latin pop music that I imagine is popular in Miami. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I feel heat. like you're adding it to your list. No, I, I I like the heat. I'm all about Miami heat culture. Coach Spo. So you like the heat? I do. Yeah. I'm like the only person who grew up that, in New York who likes the heat, but yeah, I do. You think they're going to make it out of the East? No, I don't. Giannis looks, looks really good. Uh, but I think they might go to the conference. They'll definitely go to the conference finals. So that's exciting. You should go to a game. I'm going to try to go to one. I, I thought that they were done for when I saw that Jimmy Butler, Udonis has some stuff. I'm like, this mm. team's falling apart. And I stand corrected. Guys like UD, I think they just enforce a good culture. That's that heat culture, man. Always comes through. I don't know. Um, so what do people like most want to know from you like these days? Like when people see you on the street, you wrote about this in your book a little bit, like how people can like be really nice to your face and really heinous online. But like in general, like what do you get asked the most other than like, are you and Rachel still together? Which you are. I mean, the most common for sure is, is, uh, can they get a picture? And then, uh, you know, surprisingly, a bunch of people start asking about, you know, crypto NFTs. And it's like, you know, because I'll, I'll post about it. And I'll be like, yeah, Rachel hates when I talk about this. And they'll be like, yeah, I hate when my boyfriend talks about this. Like, so it's, it, I like sharing my life with them because it gives them something to relate to. And it's less about like, I get that very asked very infrequently about like my experience on the show. It's mostly about the things that I'm posting about now and my interaction with those things. Uh, through my relationship with Rachel. And then, you know, people are asking, 
you know, where's Tyler? Who's he dating? I'm like, listen, like I plead the fifth. That's something you got to bring up with him. So, um, <laughs> you know, the same old, same old. Uh, I always want to know who Tyler's dating too. Um, what, like, what was the most harrowing part of your relationship on the show? Like, I, as a viewer, I, I thought the finale was just like the Emmanuel Acho, uh, after the final rose was like a combination of impactful and horrific. Um, and I'm just curious, like, what do you, like, what makes you cringe the most when you look back on it? Uh, the thing that it, it's funny because like Rachel and I were just so done at that point. Like mm-hmm. we had no more juice energy left to give what the franchise needed or wanted from us. Like, like all right, like last time, like, it's like, I've, 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 I'm exhausted. Like we're both exhausted from like all this bullshit that we've had to deal with, not having like, you know, someone who can like hold our hand through this process because we're having to answer questions and field questions from like the history of something that we don't really, you know, have any say or any part of after this like next few weeks, cause they're going to move on. And so like they're stuck in this funky position because they're having to address things they really don't want to talk about. And then like move on as quickly as possible to like the shiny next thing, which is like, yeah, we have two bachelorettes, which is like, you know, kudos for like both of them. Like I was super stoked for them to be, you know, in the position that I was to find someone that they were looking for. But like, we were so, yeah, yeah, we were done. We were just exhausted and we had nothing. That's what you saw. You saw two people who were just defeated. Like we had no, we had nothing left to give. Yeah. You you had your heart and beard. It was very evident that you were sorting things out. That was my playoff beard. I was, I was, I was like, that was Eastern Conference Finals, and I lost. <laughs> you know, I went home. I'm like, man, I need this through the off season. So we, you just, you just, what you just witnessed was the off season. And then I got signed to a 10 day contract with the, with the the Made Bachelor, uh, yeah. with the Dancing with the Stars. Oh, you know, right. The Dancing with the Stars was like my. I'm like, I feel rejuvenated. Cut my beard. Like I'm, I'm out in LA. Like it, we're doing something joyous and fun, opposed to like, you know having to get berated with like these questions you don't want to answer or talk about. So, uh, that was a, that was a very fun full circle experience to go from like, just like, to, uh, you guys can't see, but Matt was doing like a, a frustrated look to a happy look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, are you resentful of the position you were put in? Like, I have to imagine you weren't prepared well, I don't want to assume, but if I were you, I wouldn't have been prepared to like sort of be at the center of the racial reckoning in America. And like, I just curious, like, are you resentful of having to have b- shouldered that burden? No, absolutely not. Because every, the way that everything happens, you're never going to please everybody. So you could have gone by the playbook of you need to do X, Y, Z, and you're going to make a whole group of people frustrated. Then you could have gone the opposite way and you would have made everyone else frustrated. And thank God that I realized that early on. And I'm like, man, I'm just going to go out there and make sure I'm being a good person, make sure that everything I'm doing is honoring God and make sure that I'm making a decision for myself. Because the last thing I want to do is go through all this shit and then end up with someone I don't want to be with because that's how they wanted everything to play out. So like, I just kept it a hundred with myself and with everyone that I spoke to and interacted with. And you know, I felt like at the end of the day, they might not have agreed with how I went about things, but they respected it and they respected me. And that's all I could ask for. What was your favorite moment on the show that we didn't get to see? Um, I think there, there was just like, like, like our, there was funny stuff that happened and like everything was like, so like tightly wound. Like, well, the, it's very clear that Michelle had a great personality and like she is very funny. And I was like, why do we not get to see like any of the goofy stuff? Like I, I felt like all I knew about you is that you like to work out. And by the way, I'm appalled <laughs> by how much you work out. I just can't believe that's how someone lives life. But I just felt like we never got to see like any fun. I mean, you, you're, you're literally laying it out how it is. Like it didn't fit into the narrative. And like, you would see it at the very end. It's like, you'd see like her make some like funny joke and it's like, yo, that was hilarious. And it's like the end. And then the next show it's like this night on the bachelor. And it's like some dramatic, like she like, he, and just like all this like craziness. And then you're like exhausted as a viewer. And at the end you see something funny this time that, you know, like, 
I don't know, Maggie might have said, and you're just like, oh my God, Maggie's hilarious. And then the end. So it's like, I don't know. Again, you know, it's, it's, there's people who are getting paid a lot more than me and who have been doing this longer than I have who, who think that, you know, it went the way it should have. But uh, I just think that if you want to go somewhere for that stuff, then you can go watch like Love is Up, Love, Love Island, Too Hot to Handle. Like, there's like, you got to find your focus group and just double down on that. Like, I, I really don't think that's what people are tuning in for, but hey. I don't think anyone thinks your season went well, honestly. Like, I, I mean, and it has nothing to do with you because we didn't even get to see you, but I would guess that people at the network and at Warner's aren't like, this is what we should be doing again. So I, <laughs> but I also think the external factors with Chris Harrison um, and then how, you know, Rachel was or was not allowed to respond to the controversy around her. Like it just, I think was all just a, a tire fire. Um, yeah. Honestly. Um, <laughs> do you see any of the women from your season? Like I know like the contestants end up being friends with each other. And since you're still dating Rachel, Kirk Connell, do you still see, do you ever end up seeing any of her friends? Okay. With the last name pronunciation. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to you. thank you. I'm trying to flex on the fly. Uh, yeah, I got to see a bunch of Rachel's homies. Like I saw, well, I saw Kit's mom at, uh, an art benefit oh, cool. that we went through. Be, uh, my, my cousin works at an art benefit. So she works for the art fund and we saw Miss, uh, we saw Kit's mom at the, so we saw Ms. Kit's Ms. mom. Rally. Yeah. I see Brie all the time. Yeah. Miss Rowley, Cynthia Rowley. I saw, I see Brie all the time because we have a similar friend group. Mm. Um, and from 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 the season, that's really it. Those two. Um, yeah, it makes sense. They're in New I, York. Yeah, uh, but I know Rachel keeps up with all those, uh, a lot of those girls, a lot of those women. So, um, like, I don't think there's any hard feelings between any of them. Uh, and then I'm friends with, like, I'm going to see Dylan tonight. Uh, I've got a bunch of friends uh, through the franchise. I'll talk to uh, to Mike every now and then. Like, it's it's all love from the, the franchise. Like, it's I talk, I saw Hannah last time I was out in LA. Like it's a bunch of good people. So, so I, I, I keep your honorary Hannah Brown season is what you're saying of everyone you just named. <laughs> that was a good season. Those are good it was, people. Was very, that was a great season. Very, very good season. I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, it was just a delight actually talking to you and getting to know you a little bit, Matt. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Good, good luck in particular, surviving all the questions about you and Rachel as you do your press tour. I hope you have your, oh, for sure. your canned answers ready. Yeah, no, I'm ready to go. And whenever the, the I got a three bedroom Miami, whenever you want to come down, you know, bring your mom. It's Mother's Day this Sunday. We could all go to the F1. Like, do you have scooters ready for us? I mean, if we're not driving, I need us that scooter. So. I have three scooters, so there's no excuses. Wow. There's literally no excuses. Wow, 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 wow. Does Rachel live with you? Does she get a scooter? Rachel does get a scooter. She does not live with me. Mm. But when she's down there, she has her own scooter that I'm not allowed to ride. So. Oh, okay, cool. It's good to have yeah. boundaries. Um, exactly. Everyone, go get First Impressions by Matt James. And thank you all so much for listening. I'll be back next week. <laughs>